How's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is AI-generated TV. So we're the the concept is we're writing television with an AI. So uh, thank you, thank you, shorter than tall, crystal clear, good to hear. Uh, and anime has uh, provided our first prompt. Uh, thank you, anime, for this. Uh, oh, here we go. New story. AI generated Star Trek. You are Picard. The captain of the Enterprise who is renewing his license at the DMV. Interesting. Okay. This is what I wish Picard would have been. The DMV accidentally spells your name as Picard. You complained to the DMV, but they refuse to change it. Oh, and then there's more. When you get back to the Enterprise, you can see that your crewmates are taunting you by peeing on your X-Men trading cards. You are so mad that you start pouncing on Wesley Crusher. Specifically Wesley. If this doesn't work out for any reason, then just remember, if all else fails, you can always become a Starfleet Admiral and commandeer an entire fleet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh seems like a pretty you can always be president. Like Uh What's up, Rustbox? What's up, Sher? What's up, Misha? What's up, Prince the Shelty? Sorry for yeah, not saying hi. Spaceship DMV, yeah. Yeah, you gotta you have to have some license to because those things are huge and extremely expensive. You can't have someone going rogue with uh the Enterprise. Even though it happens all the time during the show. You can't have the captain go rogue, even though sometimes it happens during the show. The two most common species in the galaxy have been known to make life difficult for each other from time to time, especially when one. Oh, especially when one, one, one what? Of them has conquered another planet or star system. But these days, with peace between the Federation and Klingon Empire being maintained through diplomatic channels, things should be much easier than before. Unfortunately, some Klingons still harbor ill will towards their former conquerors. Ooh. There might be a 30-second delay between when we type and when we receive the comments. Yeah. But if you type it in, I'll get to it. You are directed to R2-D2's office, but you can't understand him. <laughs> uh you attempt to um explain yourself to the Klingon captain And let's get a name for him. Oh, okay. Just clean on, Captain. I am not here because I want to fight, you say. But I do believe we both have something important to discuss. Suddenly, there's a loud crash behind you, followed by several voices shouting Klingon. <laughs> What's up, punky boy? This is a lot of backstory for the DMV, exactly. A lot... <laughs> Klingons are attacking the DMV. You turn around and see that Klingons uh, have seized control of the space DMV. Oh no, no, I'm really gonna be here for a while. They've taken over the office, and now they're making sure no one leaves without getting properly licensed. Star Trek. They'll even give Captain you a quick Hunter hearing Boy. test, Bordel Class 4, and then issue you a... 
License based on whatever score they feel like giving you. <laughs> it's just like the real demon B. <laughs> the Bordel class four? I guess the Bordels are good at hearing? Bad at hearing? Who knows? It doesn't matter. No one reads this. It's just going to be something printed on your license. What's up, sure? Is Bordel something? Am I just not remembering? I don't remember the Bordel. What's a pleasant day? I've got excellent hearing. I've got Bordel hearing. Hope the line moves faster now that the Klingons work there. Yeah, but, you know, they... Uh, you just have to fight. You have to win battles. But it'll still be faster than if you just waited and pulled the ticket. Who is best, Captain Kirk or Jar Jar Binks? Well, Kirk, seemingly, yeah. But also, if Jar Jar is a secret uh, Sith Lord, then I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jar Jar. Uh, you take the newly created Klingon driving test. It, uh, it involves navigating a maze filled with obstacles such as mines, enemy ships, and more. Seems like more like a war simulation than a driving test, but all right. Fortunately, you know exactly where to go. You took driver's ed at the academy. As soon as you arrive at the starting point, you begin your journey across the treacherous landscape. <laughs> uh, your Klingon driving instructor has you back into a parking space uh, uh, in space. <laughs> Has you back into a parking space? Get it? I don't know. Back into a parking spot. Oops. Yeah. As you drive past the entrance to the DMV, you notice that someone left the door open. Quickly reversing course, you enter the building and head straight for the front desk. Hold on, I want to know how my parking test went. Run over Wesley Crusher? Oh yeah, uh -oh. Unfortunately, the Klingon security guards aren't going to let you pass until they check your credentials. Uh, we failed the hyperspeed parking test. Yeah, that's... I mean, that doesn't instant fail you, but it's not a good start. You are, uh, you are distracted after failing the first part of the exam and accidentally park the ship on top of Wesley Crusher. You could say we crushed him. After a long day of trying to convince the Klingon captain why he shouldn't attack Earth, you finally manage to escape him. However, you find yourself trapped inside the Klingon starship. Fortunately, you quickly realize how easy it would be to pilot the vessel. All right. Uh, today's off to a bad start. We're failing our driving exam. We're thinking about Grand Theft Auto. Of a Klingon vessel? They're, they're going to come ba fight back for it. Like, what are we thinking? Picard is normally not a uh, instant react kind of guy. I mean, sometimes he is, but he normally makes educated decisions. But this just seems like he's raw instinct. <laughs> he's just doing whatever the first thing that comes to his mind thinks of. The AI ignored that you crushed wesley no i think it i think it it knows it's like you've got to get out of here and you can't drive your own ship anymore 
How about steal this Klingon starship? Yeah. You, uh, flee. Uh, you are in shock after crushing Wesley. And you attempt to escape in the Klingon warship. Beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, exactly. Beat me away from prosecution, Scotty. You think about what happened to Wesley Crusher. He was crushed under the weight of your starship. Your heart aches, but you continue to try and flee the scene. Oh, Picard had some feelings for Wesley. A few moments later, you hear a voice calling out to you from outside the ship. <laughs> My heart aches, but I'm still running away and I don't want to be prosecuted for this. Oh, shit! Hey, don't leave me alone in here, says Wesley Crusher. Please don't abandon me. We like, we look outside and we could just see all of his insides going outside and he's just like I'm, I'm still alive and we're like hey, oh. I know you can hear me you're looking right at me uh, uh, sorry Wesley this is terrible news if the Klingon captain finds out that you've abandoned Wesley then you won't live to see tomorrow <laughs> ironic yeah Oh yeah, here we go. They're still pulling numbers at the DMV. Picard just did a hit or run, yeah. Wesley should have his own show. Disagree. <laughs> Although, uh, Will Wheaton would uh, definitely be thrilled to have some work again. Uh, you? Oh boy. You grab... Wesley's horribly crushed body and flee the planet. Oh no! Wesley Crusher is dead. Oh no! And you didn't even bother to save his corpse. <laughs> you need to get away from here. Before anyone sees you. Oh, damn it. We tried to grab Wesley and we grabbed a bag of trash. Eesh. It takes you a while to figure out how to operate the warp engine, but eventually you manage to set the coordinates for home. It's very hard to do alone. Will Wheaton used to be a host on a YouTube channel. I forget the name. Yeah, he didn't he play uh, like board games and stuff? I remember watching a couple of those. You think? I think he does a lot of voice work too, yeah. Um, you think you are in the clear. But suddenly, you see flashing police lights. And you are being pulled over by a Klingon police officer. The Klingon policeman pulls you over and begins writing you up for speeding. Why did you speed? Why were you going so fast? Asks the Klingon. Oh, because I wanted to get off this wretched world, you reply. Um, Picard, when you're wanted for murder and uh, Grand Theft Auto, maybe don't insult the Klingons' planet, okay? <laughs> you know, they they just took over a DMV on a whim, you know. The angry... The penalty, <laughs> the penalty for speeding is death. The angry Klingon officer forces you out of your vehicle and makes you take 
a space sobriety test that involves walking in circles, counting backwards, and touching your nose. Okay, not too different from a, a, a regular sobriety test. When the Klingon captain catches you fleeing the Klingon spaceship, you tell him everything. Then you show him the Klingon driver's license you got from the DMV earlier today. Oh god, I killed a guy, I didn't even pass my exam, I, I stole a license that didn't have a name on it. He's just like, Jesus Christ, Picard, get yourself together, my, my dude. <laughs> if you're ever, you know, if you're ever scared of not passing... A uh, driver's test, just take over the DMV, seize control. That's what we did. Uh, the Klingon captain is moved. Uh, the Klingon captain feels bad for you and decides to give you a pass. Until he notices uh, blood coming from the back seat where you have Wesley's mangled corpse. All right. How are you going to explain this one, Picard? What have you done to my brother? Demands the Klingon captain. He died saving my life. That's all I have to say. You answer coldly. A <laughs> busted headlight. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't even really caring about the corpse. The Klingon captain is furious. Um. Uh, you try. You make up. A lie to try to appease the the captain. Oop shit. I'm sorry, sir. I had no choice. Frame Kirk for Wesley's death crossing the genres here or crossing the shows. No choice. What kind of excuse is that? This isn't the Academy anymore, boy. You have to face the consequences of your actions. Don't call me a boy. I'm 72 years old. Uh, you flash your, uh, Federation card. Federation uh, co ID card. And an attempt to pull rank. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm a captain of the Enterprise, so I can do whatever I want. You know, because it might be uh, some space nightmare situation. So, please just let me go. Sir, please. My name is Picard. I am Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship I've Enterprise. I've heard this a million times. I am authorized to use lethal force against any Klingon who threatens the safety of my crew. Oh, oh, oh yeah, making up laws and regulations. Like he knows all of the Federation rules. He's not going to question that shit. The Klingon captain suspects you're lying. But does not want to find out. If you aren't. And lets you go.
Now that you're safe, you decide to return to Earth. <laughs> it says here your name is Picard. It doesn't match your ID. When you return home, you discover your name has been legally changed to key card. Isn't there a Star Trek film where they save a whale? I think like a it's like Star Trek 4, right? Or something. That does sound familiar, Misha. I don't know. By the DMV. You also learn that Wesley Crusher has gone missing. Oopsie. Where could he be? You wonder aloud. I don't know. Maybe he ran away, suggests one of your crewmates. I'll never tell. Or maybe he's been kidnapped, uh, adds another. That could be, yeah. Without the body, who's to say? Like Free Willy and Star Trek in one weird film. Yeah, I think it was like some space whale or something. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. It sounds... I've never watched any of the movies yet. Uh, but that's been on my radar for a while. Any other Star Trek aficionados know? Space Whale? Is one of the movies about a space whale? Yeah, Star Trek 4 was proven in court, yeah. That was the first Star Trek thing I've ever seen. Okay, interesting. What a weird, yeah, start to the intro to the series. Star Trek 4 was about the whales. Okay, thank you, anime. Um. Okay, you... You figure out a way to dispose of Wesley's body. Let's see what happens here. Bury it in the backyard. Why? That's the first place they're gonna check. To you, it seems like the best place because you never bury a hole, but they're gonna see the fresh grass. They're gonna see the fresh dirt. It's gonna be like a little. It's not gonna be the same height as everywhere else in your yard. They're gonna know. They're gonna. F that's the first place they're gonna search Picard when they find out you're a suspect. You dig a hole next to your house and you place Wesley Crusher into the ground. Mistake. You cover the grave with dirt and hope nobody ever discovers what you've done. Now we have to build a garage and pour cement right over that. Then you got yourself a. Why is there... Why do you have a shed in the middle of your yard, Picard? Why does it gotta be all the way in the back of my yard? Good point, Picard. I'm not gonna question the captain of the Federation. Uh, you... <laughs> you pour concrete and build a shed over Wesley's grave. There's like a Columbo episode where one of the, the murderer like puts the guy in concrete or he was trying to, and he makes it look like, yeah, um, yeah, I did it on this day, but he actually like, knew that they were gonna like tear it up and spend all this money so he was like waiting until the night after that when they dug it all up and broke out all the concrete to do it and then Columbo knew so spoilers for Columbo but very good show
me and Ellen have been steamrolling through that. We just started season six with, uh, you know, Captain Kirk. Surprisingly. Will anyone notice Wesley is gone? Uh, Beverly Crusher, hopefully. The Star Trek Four defense from the Tim Heidecker murder trial. Oh, man. I, I got to watch that whole thing. I've just watched clips from that, but. Oh, if, if this doesn't. Okay, hold on. You add a layer of concrete to the grave and then you build a small shed nearby. Yes. Now no one will be able to see the horrible sight of Wesley's remains. If this doesn't work out for any reason, then just remember, if oh. all else fails. If all else fails, pull rank. You can always become a Starfleet Admiral and commandeer an entire fleet. Is, is this the... It can't be the prequel, because he's already that. The two most common species in the galaxy have been known to make life difficult for each other from time to time, especially when one of them has conquered another planet or star system. Uh, you smile knowing that you got away with it. But then you remember. There are aliens that can read people's minds. And your crimes will come to light eventually. Captain Picard, we have detected a large object approaching our star system. We estimate its mass to be approximately 2 times 10 to the power of 20th kilograms. Its velocity indicates that it will collide with the star. Within the next hour. You say that's what she said. <laughs> All right, and then I think that's a good place to end. We got away with it until we didn't. We believe the object may be a starship of some sort. It appears to be traveling at an extremely high rate of speed, and we suspect that it will impact the star in less than 60 minutes. Well, that sounds like a part two of an episode. Uh, I think that's a good place to end this first episode. That was a fun Star Trek adventure. <laughs> Is it your mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just keep doubling down and being, they're like, Picard, why are you suddenly being an asshole to everyone right now? I don't know. What did your mom say for breakfast? Was your mom talking about me? Uh, Perfect. Let's get a suggestion of another episode. What do you want to see? Uh, you can suggest in Reddit and in YouTube. Uh, anybody can throw out a suggestion for a, a TV show they want to see. Uh, I have suggestions here or here. Uh, but you could, we could, we just remixed uh, Star Trek Next Gen, but we could do anything. What do we want the the AI to write? Do a documentary? What's Fort Boyard? What's that? Fort Boyard. What is that, Rustbox? I'm curious. Cops? Cops is interesting. What is this? Oh, like a floating fortress thing? Is a French game show created by Jacques Antoine... Oh, what is this? I'm curious about this. Cops, cops, cops. We could do a cops episode about them boarding this floating French game show. It's a show taking place at Fort Boyard where they do scary, disgusting challenges like fetch a kid, 
key from a pit of snakes. Oh, so it's like uh, Fear Factor, or what was the... That was the thing that Joe Rogan was on, right? Fear Factor? Or am I thinking of... Uh, where it eventually it was just the testicle eating show? Okay, uh, I th we can combine the two. You are a police officer investigating uh, criminal activity taking place on a French uh, reality TV show. Oops, sorry. Called Fort Boyard. Boyard? Boyard? Boyardy? Boyarding? Uh, that should be good. AI generated cops. Let's see if it understands any of that. The show is about to start, and contestants have been divided into two groups. You need to find the key that will unlock the door in order for you to escape from this room. Hey, but maybe it does know the show. It, it, it perfectly described a game. But the key is at the bottom of a big old septic tank that hasn't been cleaned in a hundred years. Uh, you suspect. So an escape room. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, an escape room, but everyone needs to find the key? I don't know. You, uh, you suspect the producers of this show are, uh, laundering... Drug money. So you go undercover as one of the contestants. Uh, your first challenge is... To locate some hidden gold coins somewhere around the fort. Okay. Because you can't get... You can't just go directly for the key, right? The, there's got to be, like, other shit in the way. It's almost like the, uh... The statue of the silver monkey. You can't go straight to that. You gotta go through the temple guards. You gotta, like, cross the moat. And then do, like, the swing challenge in, uh... Legends of the Hidden Temple. You can't just go straight to running through the temple. And doing the treasure run at the end. The fort is full of traps and puzzles. Can you solve them all? There's also an invisible wall blocking your way out, but luckily there's a secret passage leading west through the woods. I would love if there was like an adult version of the uh, the Legends of the Hidden Temple endgame. Uh, the Floor is Lava on Netflix is kind of that, but it's just, I don't know. They I feel like they complicated it too much. There's like, get rid of all the water in this and just make it a hard, like, just have like temple guards or something or just make it a physically challenging. Although maybe that thing was only challenging because kids, I don't know. Jigsaw is, as seen on TV. Imagine this is like a saw situation. Yeah, that's, it could be. This... This uh, reality TV show could be just a front for her. There is. Oh, what is it, sure? Is it American Ninja Warrior or whatever? Or... And I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, Ninja Warrior is pretty much...
Uh, you are doing surprisingly well. And make it through puzzles with ease. Puzzles and traps with ease. L-O-T-H-D reboot? What? Total wipeout? Eh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I stand corrected. <laughs> There's plenty of examples of people doing this. Uh, you are doing surprisingly well and making it through the puzzle and traps with ease. Ease until... Dot, dot, dot. A trap door opens beneath you and you fall down into darkness below. Can you get back up before being crushed by falling rocks or eaten alive by snakes? I love the idea that every show you think it's going to be different, but it's always just falling rocks and snakes. Like, that's just all they have the budget for. They just It's just like a production company that knew like a snake handler very well, and they had something on them. So every challenge is rock or snake-based. <laughs> It's like, okay, this I mean, this show was interesting once, but now you just keep doing the rock or snake thing. It's just, we get it. Who? I mean, what if you're just not afraid of snakes? Jesus Christ, Chad is like two minutes behind. Oh my God, that's disappointing. I have it on ultra low latency too for the YouTube stream. So it's... I can see why someone called the cops. Yeah. Hmm. Your cell phone rings loudly. Oh no, this is how you get caught. Oh no. It's the producer calling again, wanting to know if he should send in another contestant for tomorrow night's episode. He says they've already got five people locked inside Fort Boyard, but maybe. You could help him find someone who would be more suitable. Oh, okay. Who are you going to call? Good question. Uh, I think this is a perfect chance. What's the suggestion? If a cop could call one person... I want like a hero, a celebrity, secret call. Yeah, exactly. All right. We could pull in anyone in the world. Who would you call? I'll take suggestions. Houdini? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you call. Houdini. And Superman? Officer Corey? Uh, you call Houdini. And he... Appears the next day to help you out. All right, we got Houdini. See, wait a second. Uh, Rustbox said something. I just saw it and it went through. Oh, you mean chat on the screen, right? Is that what you're talking about, sure? Yeah, I don't know why it's so far behind. Houdini has come along to see how well you do against these challenges. So far, you're doing pretty well. You just made it past three different death traps without getting caught. Now you must defeat four deadly monsters, a giant spider, a poisonous snake, a hungry crocodile, and... What the hell? What's the liability waiver for this show? Snakes are okay. Oh my... A fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> I didn't even know those exist. It turns out that the dragons aren't actually real, though they're holograms projected onto the walls using special technology developed by the villainous Dr. Voodoo. We have that technology? I guess, well, we have a hologram Tupac, so it was only a matter of time before it was hologram dragons. You greet Houdini by playfully punching him in the gut. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> He's like, hey, 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 don't punch me in the gut. I got a show tonight. I don't want to get any cramps or nothing. Uh, You 
have a revelation and realize this whole show is just a front for Dr. Voodoo's criminal enterprise. There we go. Crack detective work. But it's too late. Dr. Voodoo wants to steal a treasure chest filled with diamonds and rubies from his rival, Count Dracula. Okay. But first, he needs to figure out how to open the safe where it's kept. All right, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Time to team up with Count Dracula to defeat Dr. Voodoo. You sp explain it all to the camera. Yeah, we do. We have uh, uh, our own uh, talking head scene. And we're like, this is, our, this is our confessional. We're just blowing the investigation because Dr. Voodoo watches the dailies. So, You set up a secret meeting with Count Dracula. And inform him of Dr. Voodoo's plans. Listen, Dracula, I know you're not friendly with the police department, but uh, you're going to be robbed. Count Unless... Dracula doesn't seem too surprised when you tell him what Dr. Voodoo is planning. Mm -hmm. In fact, he seems quite eager to take part in the robbery himself. What? After all, he thinks, why shouldn't he benefit financially from all those years of hard work he put into creating the most powerful vampire? Okay. Wait, Dr. Voodoo made a powerful? Oh, okay. Here. Army ever assembled. Uh, vampire army, okay. After defeating the last monster, you finally reach the vault. However, mm -hmm. there's no sign of the diamond box anywhere. Where did it go? Where Perhaps it was taken go? away by one of the other contestants during their stay here at Fort Boyard. Uh, you notice a note from Houdini in the box, in the, in the vault. It says, thanks for all the diamonds, sucker. Wait, what the? F it's just starting a new story. You know, this, ha this seems to happen a lot with utropy. There we go. I just got to retry it. You get to the Shrine of the Silver Monkey, but suddenly lose all motor skills. That seems to be the case for all the kids that get there. Although it is like probably like an all-day shoot, and they probably like purposely like don't give the kids enough water or snacks. <laughs> they don't want them to be physically fit for the challenge. Okay. You are a magician performing tricks for children at a birthday party. I th a little girl named Emily asks you to make her disappear. How will you trick her into disappearing? I feel like we're undercover again, but now we're trying to catch Houdini. This time, you'll use sleight of hand to distract everyone while you secretly move the tablecloth under the table too. Have you tried editing the story settings to helping with starting a new story issue? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's just like if I change the uh, configuration... It'll uh, get back in the swing of things. Emily, yeah, the AI. Uh, let's actually try that. I don't even know what we're on right now. We're on co-writer. Let's try Weaver and see what happens. Good idea, Prince the Shelty, though. Yeah. This time, you'll use sleight of hand to distract everyone while you secretly move the tablecloth under the table, too.
Cover the little girl up. Oh. When the audience notices the missing child, it won't even occur to them that you might have done something wrong. <laughs> you know, not exactly the best magic trick to do nowadays. You know, you don't want missing kids. We don't want missing children. There's a loud explosion behind you, and smoke fills the hall. What the fuck? What is this? I'll oh, it's Houdini! As you turn around, you see flames shooting out from one corner of the stage. The magician on stage looks confused as hell, and suddenly the curtain falls shut on its own. What happened? When the house lights come up, there's nothing left of the theater except piles of rubble. I'm gonna use the sleight of hand to distract everyone while I secretly move the table, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you can hear the legs of the tables just scooting like, they're like, look, anything you're doing with your hands right now is completely, unless we're like deaf, we can hear the table screeching across the floor. Uh, there he is. Uh, it is Houdini. He, he has fallen for your trap and is instantly surrounded by federal agents. We're getting a promotion. Oh, what the heck? Actually. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all right. Now it's just starting another story again. Okay, here we go. They cuff him and carry him off. Yeah, arrest him, boys. The feds drag you outside and you discover that they were only arresting Hound Ainy because you had falsely accused him of kidnapping Emily. <laughs> Hound Aini. I love that. But he never kidnapped anyone. Oh. It was Dr. Voodoo the whole time. You were tricked. And now he's escaped with the ruby box. Not the ruby box! You are trying to break into a jewelry store owned by Count Dracula. This is your first attempt, so things may not go perfectly. Houdini does the sarcastic slow clap, yeah. So you finally realized the truth. Oh. Now the FBI is searching for you. Run away now and hide forever. Or give yourself up right away. You run away and attempt to get revenge. Uh, uh, you run away and attempt to get vigilante justice on Dr. Voodoo for avoiding. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. We're vi get, we're getting justice. Oh no, no, no. Wow, this the AI does not want to go with me on this. But unfortunately for you, he is very fast and escapes with his henchmen. No. I want a oh, here we go. You break into his mansion and attack him. Maybe reduce creativity. His guards manage to Maybe. beat you unconscious however, and throw you in prison. Unfortunately, you didn't kill Dr. Voodoo. Instead, he escapes the jail and sets the entire town ablaze to lure you into killing him. Whoa, cool! He's like, I'm gonna kill all these innocent people, you... You hero cop. You can't save everyone, man. Alright, let's change. Let's change... 
to low rider a flexible ride with low slope for handling controlled creativity sounds good to me you know it is a trap but you show up to the showdown with dr voodoo anyway you approach him with your gun drawn and read him his rights as you attempt to arrest Dr. Voodoo. We can do this the easy way or the hard way, Dr. Voodoo. Unfortunately, Dr. Voodoo manages to knock you unconscious before any actual violence occurs. The two of you stand face to face in the middle of a burning building. You point a gun at Dr. Voodoo, but he points one back at you and says, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I like that he like knocked us out and clearly had the upper hand just so he could take us to a more dramatic location for the showdown. He's like, I'm going to set this building on fire, wake you up, give you a gun, get a gun myself. <laughs> Very complicated, Dr. Voodoo. You pull the trigger and hear a click. You try again, and nothing happens. He's a showman. He really wants this to be a big thing. You can't shoot me. That's illegal. Well, says Dr. Voodoo, it seems like we both want to die today. Then he pulls out a pistol of his own and shoots you dead. Wow. Wow. You fall down dead and realize you will never know who will win Fort Boyard. Oh, but you wake up in a hospital bed. The Come doctor back. tells you that you are lucky to be alive after your encounter with Dr. Voodoo. Ooh. He says that Dr. Voodoo escaped from prison shortly before you arrived to confront him, All and right. he suspects Dr. Voodoo may still be out there somewhere. I died for like 30 seconds, but then I came back. You know, hero doctors. Ace, Ace Hospital staff. Uh, you turn on the TV and see... Who won the show? And it was none other than. Is it gonna say Dr. Voodoo? Oh, shit. Dr. Voodoo wins his own show. Dr. Voodoo. Yeah, what up? It was great. Congratulations. Rigged. You have just become famous by beating one of the greatest criminals in history. Beating? I don't know. I think Dr. Voodoo clearly skirted the law and danced around us and now he's free still he's he's on the lam but he's not in jail either so the police ask if you saw anything suspicious during your time at fort boyard <laughs> okay Here, here's the way to end the story you list all of the suspicious activities you witnessed at fort boyard <laughs> oh, come on. Give me a good list. All right, here we go. Dr. Voodoo's crew used mind control devices to keep contestants quiet about their true identities and possibly forced them to participate in dangerous stunts. <laughs> the mind control devices were the promise of $500. <laughs> that was the mind control device. Dr. Voodoo stole diamonds and rubies from his rival. Count Dracula. Eh. Dr. Voodoo built a secret underground laboratory where he created Vamp. Whoa. Vampiric soldiers. Holy shit. Dr. Voodoo planned to rob a bank using a robot duplicate of himself. 
And all the police officers are like, why didn't you call this in? Why did it, Why were you going alone for this whole time? Like, as soon as you heard of one of those things, you should have called for backup. And he's like, I was too deep in, man. I really wanted to win the show. However, the cops don't believe you. One cop says that everyone knows that Fort Boyard is fake. Oh, and well. another says that there's no such thing as vampires. Well, fake in the sense that it's rigged, but not. it was sure felt real when I was there. Dodging snakes to save my life. I fought a hologram dragon. You're telling me that's fake? They're like, well, yeah, t technically a hologram is light not, and it can't hurt you. So you just witness like a... A Disney attraction. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> uh, you realize Dr. Voodoo is going to get away with it unless you can prove his crimes before he does mm. you decide to follow him to Europe where he lives in exile you arrive in Paris France where Dr. Voodoo lives in hiding Uh, you shoot him with a tranquilizer dart and waterboard him in a hotel room until he confesses. Dot, dot, dot. everything then you take him to jail listen i know i just committed a war crime and that uh you're probably gonna get out and go free but at least i know the truth that's all that matters to me in my vigilante ways in return for helping to catch dr voodoo the french government grants you citizenship and hey. gives you a job writing crime stories for their newspaper <laughs> okay you write articles about all kinds of criminal activity including dr voodoo's involvement in every single one of them wow we're just slandering we're just like you know actually dr voodoo was uh the sole root of crime in the entire world so we're just blaming him for everything you can't waterboard a corpse you're good <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, well all right i think that's a good place to end it wow what a crazy reality tv crime drama a documentary almost like all right one last story here let's start it up i like that low rider i'm gonna switch to that for the this, this next one here too uh can i get a suggestion for the last episode of ai generated tv for today Anything you're wondering. We just did Cops and uh, Star Trek Next Gen. So uh, whatever you want to see. Here's some suggestions. Here's some suggestions. A travel show where they eat weird food. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess that, yeah, that's, that's it. That's all I need. Nemo searches for Doris. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we could... We might be able to combine those two. You are um, you are Freddy. Uh, let's see what what are the names of some travel show hosts? We got uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain. We've got. Um, what else? Who am I thinking of? Uh, who's the f fat guy with the bald head? Um, Guy Fieri? No, uh, I guess Guy is also kind of... He also has his own version of that. 
I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a travel host name that would roll off the tongue. You are Freddy Nemo. <laughs> Today we are visiting Atlantis. Okay. Uh you are Freddy Uh You are Freddy Nemo. I'm just I, I can't think of anything else. You are Freddy Nemo. Uh a travel show host where you eat weird food from all over the world. Today, you are visiting Atlantis. You head to the beach and there is an ancient temple built into it with strange markings on the walls. It's quite dark in here so you light your torch. As you go deeper inside you find many treasure chests but they're empty. Are we hoping there's just like oysters in a thousand year old chest or something? Well, I thought we were going to like a restaurant or something. We're just, we're just spelunking through uh, Atlantis. <laughs> The ruins of Atlantis. We're in like a diver suit and we're just trucking through. We're like, we're gonna find some good eats here today. Indiana Jones. Yeah, exactly. Indiana Jones in the quest for a delicious new entree. Oh, okay. Per yeah. You try to eat something from the chest. I like that. Ew. It crumbles when you bite it. Uh oh, I should not have just put that in my mouth. The skeleton of a fish lies at your feet. The bones have been bleached white by sunbeams <laughs> filtering through the water above, making them look like pieces of coral or perhaps some kind of fossilized sea creature. Uh, a huge meatball trap rolls towards you. That's excellent, Rustbox. There's a boulder trap, but it rolls super slow. Yeah. <laughs> Wait until it uh, catches the uh, the marinara luge. The office is on t TV. Yeah, it has been for a long time, by Luigi. Welcome, welcome. We're, we're doing some AI-generated TV. We're doing... Uh, AI generated travel show. Uh, so there's this weird coral. You squint your eyes. And the only thing you can you squint your eyes and think the sea creature fossil kind of looks like a tasty meatball. A shark tooth appears before you, looking as if someone has carved <laughs> it out of bone trench. rather than grown it naturally. A bit too large for even a human mouth, it seems unlikely tooth, that anyone would be able to swallow one whole without choking. You notice a trail of sauce leading into a building. Uh, needing it into a, a small, you notice a trail of sauce leading into a, what's like an underwater cave called? Is it just a cave? You notice a trail of sauce leading into a, uh, cavern? You follow it and see dot, dot, dot. No, no, no. 
Oh, shit. A long trail of blood leads down deep into the ocean floor below you. There is also a large hole in the wall where the red liquid can't seem to drain properly. Oh, no. Perhaps this is what caused the leak. Yeah, here we go. You get closer to the to the fluid and realize it is not blood. It is marinara sauce. Oh, it looks like we're going to flavor flavor underwater flavor country. Marinara sauce pours out of the hole in the wall. Slowly <laughs> dripping onto the sand below. Mm -hmm. This must be why the ground was slippery earlier. No wonder you fell. No wonder. Family friendly. <laughs> exactly. You continue to follow the trail. Something tasty is at the end of this marinara trail. Blood continues to flow freely from the opening until the entire area around it turns red with gore. Oh shit, okay. In the center of this pool stands a giant squid-like monster which has lost its tentacles and... seems to be dead. <laughs> well, nothing like a little marinara sauce on some squid. You take a bite. Edible submarine. Just what I expected. <laughs> yeah. You take a bite. And this is just like the calamari that's going to be in my restaurant. You take a bite of the marinara covered giant squid. Haha. <laughs> It tastes salty. Always season the taste. Whoa, a sudden gore description here. Your teeth sink into its tough fleshy body, ripping through skin and muscle effortlessly. Uh-huh. Its innards spill out upon your plate, steaming hot and oozing juices. We've got like an iron grip jaw. We're like jaws. From like du the double level seven movies, we're just like argh, argh, ripping through like inch thick flesh of this giant squid. And we're just like argh, the flavor is deep inside. Argh, argh. When you're done eating the giant squid, we ate the whole it thing? collapses into a pile of slime on the sand beneath you. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, I uh, don't know what came over me. I was going to share, but the. Uh... The worst way to describe eating seafood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, in a way, it perfectly described what eating uh, squid would be like, but uh, just, yeah, not appetizing at all. Uh, you knocked the sand away. Uh, and chase after the slime. I imagine we're like falling through like quicksand now. We're like, oh. Slimy green goop drips off the top of the mound and slides quickly toward you. Your reflexes kick in just in time and you catch hold of it with both hands, holding it steady as it rolls toward you. You look around and notice that you have made it. You have found the secret entrance to Atlantis. You check out the restaurant. <laughs> you check out a four-star Michelin restaurant. The door opens up right under your nose and reveals a huge cavernous room filled with glowing blue crystals suspended in midair. The air smells faintly of sulfur, so shit. but otherwise it doesn't smell bad. You know, other than the clear 
awful sulfur smell that smells like uh, hot diarrhea. It doesn't smell too bad in here. I can see why no one came back for Atlantis. Uh, a fish named Dory leads you to a table for one. And a school of clownfish set out a uh, a a lot of dishes. Set out a five course di dinner consisting of. One, sardines two, squid three, octopus four, lobster five, shrimp. Come on, no kelp, no, uh, no sides, it's all protein. Dory says, I'm glad you could make it. She then asks, do you want wine? Wine me, baby. I'm going to flavor country. You accept, and Dory pours you a weird substance it is clear and tastes like salt water this is just salt water you spit it out immediately because it burns your throat but dory laughs and tells you that it will help cure seasickness all right as soon as she leaves the fish start talking about how much fun they had today <laughs> Can I get more sulfur? Yeah. <laughs> Can you make it smell more like shit in this restaurant? Thanks. You complain about the sulfur smell. I hate to make a stink, especially since this is like a hidden city where no one's been to in thousands of years, presumably. And uh, well, it really smells like shit in there. They tell you that it comes from the nearby volcano. I don't care. It's only natural since it used to be a volcano itself once. It's natural doesn't mean it's good. After dinner, Dory takes you back to your hotel room. Once inside, she offers you a drink and then starts kissing you passionately. That's one way to make me forget about the sulfur smell. <laughs> you can't believe it. Tonight... You are finally going to have relations with a fish. Is this a Finding Nemo story? It's kind of turned into that, I guess. A Finding Nemo porn parody mixed with Guy... F I imagine the, the travel host is Guy Fieri. That's just who I'm envisioning this guy has turned into. He's like a Guy Fieri uh, reject. <laughs> Where he resorts to... Having sex with a fish on live television? But wait. Why does Dory keep asking if you've ever been intimate with a woman before? Uh-oh. Does she think you haven't been sleeping with women for years? Yeah, does she, I hope she doesn't think I'm a virgin. Suddenly, you realize that Dory isn't really a girl at all. Oh, what am I... What? Okay, that's a that's not fine. She's a man in drag. That's fine. I don't know why he you... He keeps saying he wants to do more than kiss, though, <laughs> and you don't know what to say anymore. You decide to play along and pretend to enjoy himself while secretly thinking that <laughs> you'd rather be alone. Ooh, <laughs> this, got, this got weird. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is unusual. Yeah. Um, you get a big whiff of sulfur and start to gag. However, Dory thinks you are 
disgusted by her body and slaps you with her tail fin. And that's why you never sleep with a waitress at the restaurant you're going to. She then forces herself on you, trying to force her way past your whoa, defenses despite the fact whoa, that you whoa, clearly... Whoa, 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 no, 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 we're not going there. Um, whoa, 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 the R word, the Ikey Dikeys. Wow, wow, I gotta, I have to change this. I don't know what uh, gagging and sexual just leads to the big R word, which we're not going there. Yikes. Um, <laughs> you go to sleep and wake up to discover Dory has made a delicious breakfast of that 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 a delicious breakfast of a salt <laughs> salty salt fried eggs bacon sausage there we go. pancakes mm. waffles toast coffee orange juice chocolate milk tea and a big bowl full of jellyfish. Mm -mm. He tells you that he'll leave now, but promises to come visit again tomorrow night. Okay. You give the secret restaurant of Atlantis a rating out of five Uh, five marinara bottles. Big old bottles. This is becoming a romantic story. Well, whoa, five fifths. It's better than sex. I give it five bottles of marinara sauce. My perfect score. <laughs> this, this secret restaurant of Atlantis, it's better than sex. Years later, you return to the secret restaurant of Atlantis to discover that your show has made it a hot tourist destination. You sit down to lunch with a group of tourists who are excitedly discussing their day at the site. After hearing about all the different things they did, you decide to join them. Yeah, I'm just going to invite myself to lunch with you guys. They're like, uh, okay, we didn't say you could sit down. Uh, what do you guys have? And we're just like taking little bites of their food. We're like, oh, you got the food? Yeah, that's pretty good. The squid's pretty good. Have you tried the marinara sauce? And they're like, dude, you didn't, you didn't pay for any of this. What are you doing? They talk about how cool it was to swim with dolphins and watch sharks in the tank. They're kind of, they're too scared to say anything because it's like, <laughs> they're starstruck, but also they're like, this isn't okay. Are you going to pay us back for this? Uh, while you are socializing... You are secretly looking around for Dory, but she is not here. Instead, there is a new waiter serving you. His name is Frank and he has a mustache that makes him look like a villain from a 1930s movie. Frank tells you that he knows your favorite meal and brings you a plate of sardines. Oh, uh, you know what? 
Then you put it together. Dory is Frank. And he's always been here waiting for you. You feel terrible for having rejected his advances so many times and vow never to hurt another fish again. Wow! Frank then invites you over to a private party being thrown by his boss, King Neptune himself. Well, celebrate good times, come on! <laughs> King Neptune tells you about how some monster ate his pet squid, pet giant squid. You nervously change the subject. He goes on to explain that he needs a champion to fight the beast and save the city. What kind of person do I need to be, you ask? Someone brave, answers Neptune. I accept. They're like, what? I wasn't asking you. I was just saying. I was just making small talk. You volunteer. And ask what you need to do. King Neptune asks you to eat. Dot, dot, dot. Three octopus legs, which turn out to this be rubbery tentacles with suckers on them. Then you have to eat two squid heads and an eyeball which taste like pickled onions. Bleh. Finally, you have to chow down on a giant crab leg which tastes like lobster. Okay, not too bad. You feel extremely full, but you are able to gobble it all down. But then you realize, then King Neptune reveals this was all a setup. You are revealed to be the monster that ate his pet squid, pet giant squid. King Neptune sentences you to Whoa! Death and orders everyone to throw rocks at you until you die. <laughs> okay, that seems extra cruel. Everyone, citizens of Atlantis, throw rocks at this travel host until he is dead. But instead of dying... You transform into a giant squid yourself and eat everyone. What? Everyone except Dory, who escapes with the rest of his species and flees from Atlantis <laughs> forever. Oh, love. <laughs> wow. That's tragic, but also fucking awesome. Man. All right, well, I think that's a good place to end it. <laughs> Travel host uh, gets sentenced to death uh, by offending where he was traveling to and then turns into a giant squid and eats everyone. The ultimate meal was uh, living sentient creatures. And he just couldn't eat the, the love of it. It was a love story, yeah. You know, Dory might have been Frank, but, you know, we still loved them. So... What a, what a weird bunch of stories. If you're just watching for the first time ever, we do this all the time. We uh, do streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday over at Twitch, twitch.tv slash AIPD. Go and check us out. Uh, give us a follow. Follow us on Reddit where we do AI generated TV every Sunday. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe. 
Join the Discord. You could submit your prompts, share your stories with other AI storytellers. Here we go. Let me copy and paste the Discord link. Uh, please, 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 if you like us, tell a friend. Join the Discord. Come back. Here's the link uh, in Reddit here. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow where we have our Wiwe. Yeah, thank you, Rustbox. See you tomorrow. We'll be on Twitch, 9 p.m. Eastern. Check it out if you liked us. Bye, Hobiwe, everyone. Special guest Charlie Matt joining us. If you don't know who that is, he's funny. Check him out. Uh, until next time, bye, Hobiwe.